Well, hey there, I just wrapped up my talk at the Legacy Scaler Conference here in Atlanta, and I wanted to share it with you. Friends, I am really pissed off. I am really pissed off because women are still paid less than men for the exact same jobs. I am really pissed off because men on average have more than double the retirement savings than women. I'm really pissed off because women are 56% of the college students, but have more than two thirds of the student loan debt. Black women graduate with more debt than anyone. I am really pissed off because more women are in poverty than men. And I'm really pissed off because these statistics get so much worse for black women, indigenous women, people of color, and LGBTQIA plus folks. Transgender Americans experience poverty at double the rate of the general population, and their unemployment rate is three times the national average. 2277. That is the year that the gender economic gap is expected to close. I am really pissed off about that, and I want to talk about what we're going to do about it. Now look. There are a lot of things that need to happen before we achieve economic equity, and we're not going to cover them in the eight minutes that I have here with you today. But there is one thing that would make a difference, and it can start here today with us. There was a study that was done a few years ago that found that uh, people, and in particular women, are more comfortable talking about sex, marital difficulties, mental illness, politics, and their own deaths than they are talking about money. If you're uncomfortable talking about money, I'm not going to be able to change that in eight minutes. If you are terrified to talk about money, I'm not gonna be able to change that in eight minutes either. If you'd rather talk about sex, then let's talk. But look, the more we don't talk about money, the more we are inflicting psychological and financial harm on ourselves. The more we ignore the big money elephant in the room, the more we are increasing the wealth gap the more we let shame or fear around money stop us from asking questions and sharing stories and overcoming the big bad money monster, the more we stand in the way of building generational wealth so that our families and our communities aren't just supported in our lifetime, but in the lifetimes after us. When we talk about money, we can demand equal pay. When we talk about money, we can arm ourselves with the knowledge to save more, to build retirement funds, to invest better, and to demand better from a society that was not designed to work for the people in this room. We are facing massive economic inequity in this world, and we're battling patriarchy and colonialism and capitalism every single day. We're all in this fight together, but we're not sharing notes. Why the hell not? My wealth is not my worth. That is the American dream. From our very early beginnings, we are taught through subtle and not so subtle messaging that what we have, what we possess, what we earn determines our value to society. We're shown celebrities who flaunt their houses and their wardrobes and their toys, and we're told that is what to aspire to. We're racked with shame if we have the smallest house on the street or we can't send our kids to the fanciest school. We're led to believe that our salary is a measure of our effort, our abilities, and our contributions, and the less we make, the less we offer. Women are only 55% as valuable as men. The average female-led household has only 55% of the wealth that the average male-led household has. If my wealth is my worth, then women are only 55% as valuable as men are. My wealth is my worth. That is the message that has been constant in our lives in any number of ways. Now, there may be a lot of reasons why we're uncomfortable talking about money. We come from different cultures where the way we're raised, talking about money is rude or improper. Maybe we don't have the language to talk about money. We don't want to be seen as stupid or naive. Maybe we think everyone else is doing so much better than we are, and we don't really want to be embarrassed about it. There was another study that said the ultra wealthy don't want to talk about money because they don't want to be seen as privileged or corrupt, the bad guys. Uh, and that middle class folks don't want to talk about money because they're supposed to be living the American dream 
they should have figured this stuff out already, right? And they live on this belief that everybody else has done it and not them, and they don't want to be kicked out of the room. Money is taboo because it's an easy tool to quantify people's position in the system, and nobody wants to talk about what their rank is in that system. What all of these things have in common is that they are based on this idea that how much money we have and what we've done with the money we have and what we earn says something about who we are as a person. Not just something, it says everything about who we are as a person. My wealth is my worth. That fucking message. And so we take that message and we internalize it and we let it sink in and radiate to our core until we absolutely believe it and live it and it becomes us. And so we shy away from talking about money because then we'd just be talking about how valuable we are. And let's face it, we may not feel all that valuable. Don't you find it interesting that in a society where the goal is to have more, it's considered inappropriate to talk about the vehicle to get more? Not talking about money is a privilege of the wealthy. My wealth is not my worth. My wealth is a combination of privilege and struggle and effort and luck, and it says absolutely nothing about the value that I offer to this world. Friends, I am really pissed off. I am really pissed off because I don't want to ever worry that I won't be able to afford safe housing for my family. I am really pissed off because I don't ever want to live in fear of that next crushing medical bill. I am really pissed off because I want to be paid equally and fairly and see reparations for the decades and generations of intentional financial harm that has been done to marginalized people. I am really pissed off because at some point long ago, someone told me that my value to this world had to do with how much money I had and what I owned and that belief has kept me silent and silence is harm. This isn't just about fighting for more wage transparency. This is about having conversations in our workplaces and our businesses and our homes and our communities and sharing that information and trading data so that every single one of us can be armed with exactly what we need to fight back and create our own wealth. So my ask of you today is this, tell one person one thing about your money, what you earn, how much you've saved, what you've invested in, how much you don't have, what you haven't done, or what it feels like to not have any money, or perhaps what it feels like to have lots of it. And remember this, your wealth is not your worth, and through your voice, you have the power to change that.